Hi, thanks for joining me. This is a 60 minute yoga for shoulder stability, all levels Hatha practice. This is an adventure yoga with Steven Iwashi practice though. So all levels means I will challenge you, but there will be options. So do what you can do and do your best. That's all I ask. For now, unroll your mat and let's get started. Please come onto your knees and sit on your heels. Sit up tall, Vatrasana. I just want to make sure everybody knows where their shoulder blades are, so stretch your right arm out in front of you, take your left hand, reach underneath your right arm, and reach for your back, reach for your shoulder blade. It's that flat bone at the back of your rib cage. If you move your shoulder up and down, you might be able to feel your shoulder blade move up and down. It roughly looks like a closed hand like this. It's a flat bone at the back of your rib cage, and it's an essential part of your shoulder. There's one on the other side, just to make sure, check, stretch your left arm out, take your right arm, reach underneath you, and reach for that flat bone at the back of your rib cage. Move your shoulder up and down, and you'll feel it move a little bit. We're going to work on shoulder stability today, and so I just want to make sure we all know where our shoulder blades are, because we're going to work with them a lot. Cool. Sit up tall. Close your eyes. And let go of your day. Whatever time of day it is for you, let go whatever you have had on already, and just come here to your mat, to your practice. Sit up tall. Lengthen your inhale a little. Lengthen your exhale a little. Allow your breath to be more stable, to be steady, to help bring you to the here and now. Bring your hands together in front of your heart, Anjali Mudra. And in that connection of your hands touching each other, find stability in yourself. Create stability from within. Yoga helps us find these moments of stability regardless of what's been happening already today, what's happening in your life. Being able to tap into moments of stability will help you tap into moments of happiness, even while the world is twisting and turning and pushing and pulling you around. It's one of the great benefits of our practice. Begin this practice, let's sing one ohm together. Sit up tall. Exhale. Inhale. your chin, lower your hands to your left, lift your chin, open your eyes, walk your hands forward, lift your hips up, and tuck your toes underneath your feet. Lift your knees up so you can really push all of your toes down, get all of your toes pushing into the ground, and then start to bring your knees towards the ground again, stretch your knees back towards your feet to tighten things up. Bring your knees down, sit on your heels, and then reach back. If you're anything like me, 
your baby toe might like trying to get out of this. So bring your baby toe into this as fast as you can. This is called toe crusher. Fun one, right? <laughs> we'll do a little more in the toe crusher by working on our shoulders to help forget about what's happening. A little like Garudasana, eagle arms, take your right arm underneath your left arm, cross as high up on your arms as you can, but then instead of crossing your wrists, bring the back of your hands together. With your left hand, extend your wrist, turn the palm of your left hand up towards the ceiling. Then move your right hand around to the front and turn your hand towards your left hand and grab the baby finger side of your left hand. Pull down with your right hand and then round into your upper back. Do that by stretching your elbows forward. Lift your elbows up and steady your breath. This is just a nice shoulder stretch, helping to start some of our shoulder stabilizers. And move your elbows a little, pull your elbows down. Maybe make little circles or just stretch them forward and back. Move them up and down. And then release your arms. Take your left arm underneath your right. Bring the backs of your hands together. And then extend your right wrist. Turn your right palm up towards the ceiling. And then take your left hand in front of your right. Turn your left hand to face your face, and then with your fingers, hold the baby finger side of your right hand. Extend your wrists a little more by pulling down with your left hand, and then push your elbows away from you. Stretch up through your elbows a little. Keep pushing your elbows away from you. And then bring your elbows down. Make little circles. So just move through your elbows to find different places to stretch. Push your elbows away and back, up and down, whatever feels right. And then under your arms, walk your hands forward, lift your butt up. Oh, untuck your toes and just for a moment sit back on your feet again so that you can stretch your toes the opposite direction. Push through your toes. And then lie down on your back. Stretch your legs out. Bring your legs together. Dorsiflex your feet. That means make your feet like standing, like Tadasana, like mountain pose. We're gonna to work to find the stability of a mountain here within yourself as you lie down. Stretch your arms up overhead. Extend your wrists. It means turn your palms up towards the ceiling and then push your hands up towards the ceiling. What I want you to notice is what's happening with your shoulder blades. So now, instead of pushing up towards the ceiling, push your shoulder blades down towards the ground. You'll actually feel them push into your mat. They'll even start to draw towards each other a little. Push your hands up and notice that your shoulder blades start to move away from each other. You might even notice they come off the ground, that they move around the sides of your rib cage. Push up. And keep this. Move your rib cage down towards your shoulder blades more. So imagine moving the center of your chest down towards the ground, even as you push your hands up towards the ceiling. And then bring your arms to your sides. Shake your wrists out before you bring your hands to the ground. And rest your arms at your sides. Bend your knees and bring your feet to the ground. Bring your big toes to touch. Bring the inner edges of your feet to touch. Stretch your arms up again. 
and extend your wrists again. Turn your palms up towards the ceiling. Lift your head and chest, look past your knees. And then pick your feet up, take your knees really wide, bring your arms inside your legs, touch inside your legs. Push your legs into your arms, keep extending your wrists. Supta Bakasana. So this is Bakasana or crow pose, but on your back. Just get your arms deeper on your legs, lift your head and chest more. Push your arms into your legs, squeeze your legs into your arms, and look up past your fingers. Supta Bakasana. Look, we're already arm balancing. Cool. Bring your head and shoulders to the ground. And then take your right leg, cross it over your left leg. Take your left hand, reach around the sole of your right foot and hold the baby toe side of your right foot. Getting the other legs a little tougher. So with your right hand, reach for your left foot. To help make it available, bend your left knee more and then grab the outer edge of your left foot with your right hand. And now move both feet away from your butt. Open your knees a little bit. And then pull your feet down, pull your knees towards your chest. So it's Gomukhasana legs, but on your back. Now, instead of being up on your upper back or your middle back, work to unround your lower back. So move your sacrum towards the ground, even start to move your tailbone towards the ground. You might find your lower back arches a little. If you can do that, do that. As you pull on your feet, resist a little with your feet. So push your feet into your hands, stretch your tailbone to or towards the ground. And then change sides. Cross your left leg over your right. With your right hand, reach around the sole of your left foot and hold the baby toe side of your left foot. Bend your right knee a little more, reach with your left hand and grab for the baby toe side of your right foot. And then move your feet away from your butt. Open up your knee joints a little. Pull your knees down towards your chest. Pull your feet down, not really towards the ground, but in that direction. And then here you're probably on your middle back. So let's work to unround our backs. Move your hips forward. Bring your sacrum towards the ground or your waistband. If you don't know where your sacrum is, that's totally fine. And then your tailbone, work to get your tailbone to the ground so that your lower back starts to arch, might even come off the ground. Resist what's happening with your hands a little with your feet. So push your feet up, pull down with your hands. And find stability here and now in this shape. And then release your legs, bring your feet to the ground. Set your legs up like Satubandha Sarvangasana, bridge pose. So have your feet about hip distance apart. Tuck your shoulders in a little bit. Instead of doing the usual Satubandha Sarvangasana there, take your hands and grab the edges of your mat. So take your fingers underneath your mat and really grip the sides of your mat. Push your shoulders down and lift your hips up. Tuck your shoulders in a little. Pull your mat apart. I haven't yet seen a mat rip when people do this, and I've taught this to a lot of students, so pull. Expand your chest. Engage your shoulders. Tighten up your butt, and lift your hips higher. Pull your mat apart more. Bring your hips down to the ground, turn to one side, sit up, and stand up. 
Stand in Tadasana with your feet about hip distance apart. This next thing we're going to do is I call serratus step ups, but we're going to do them standing. Often I would have you do this in plank pose. I have a one minute serratus step ups yoga tip video that you can watch. I will link it here if I can, it should go across the top of the video. You can always pause this video, click on that, practice that. I'm not doing that in this class because it involves blocks or a big book. And I didn't wanna force you to bring props to class today. I'll link to it at the end of class as well. So at the end of class, if you're like, what were those serratus step ups? You'll be able to find it. For now, we're going to do it standing. Stretch your arms out in front of you and extend your wrists. So it's like a standing plank pose. Then we're going to narrow our hand distance a little. Bring your thumbs together to touch. And then push your hands forward. When we do this in plank pose, you're pushing your hands down into blocks. This is to help get that action in our shoulder blades that we already worked with on our back where your shoulder blades move out to the sides and even round around the sides of your rib cage. That's called protraction anatomy fans. This work is called serratus step ups because it helps target your serratus anterior muscles, anatomy fans, and they're muscles that help stabilize your shoulders, which is our work today. To find the stability of a mountain in our shoulders. So the step ups go like this. Keep your right shoulder blade moving onto your back of your right side of your rib cage, but pull your right hand towards you slightly. Keep your right arm straight, just slightly, like half a centimeter. Then move your right hand over to the right. Keep your right shoulder blade and right rib cage connected and push your right hand forward more. Keep your rib cage moving back to your shoulder blade and pull your arm back in line with your left hand, even just a little bit further, and then move your left hand over, touch your thumbs together. Move your rib cage on your left side back into your shoulder blade. Keep that as you pull your left hand towards you a little. Move your left hand over to the left, and then keep your shoulder blade and rib cage connected. Push your left hand away from you. Keep your shoulder blade and rib cage connected. Pull your left hand back. Rib cage back into your shoulder blade. Move your left hand over. Touch your thumbs. Pull your right hand back a little. Same thing, first side. Move your right hand over to the right. Rib cage and shoulder blade together. Push them together forward. Keep them together. Pull back. It's the harder part. Move your rib cage back to your shoulder blade. Thumbs to touch. Pull back with your left hand just a little. Move it over to the left a little and then push them forward. Shoulder blade and rib cage. Left hand forward. And then think about moving the left side of your rib cage back into your shoulder blade as you pull your left hand back. Move your left hand over. Thumbs to touch. Release your hands and shake your wrists out because that's a lot on your wrists. Even flick your fingers a little. I find that's really useful after all that wrist extension. And then reset to Dawson. Find the stability of the mountain in mountain pose here and now. Steady your breath, steady your pose. Stretch your arms up shoulder distance apart, Urdhva Hastasana, and fold forward, Uttanasana. Step your right leg back and come into a lunge. Left knee over your left ankle, push down through your right toes, push through both feet, bring your hands to your waist, stretch your arms up, and then take your left hand, hold your right wrist, stretch up, and curl to the left, side back. I call this one crescent, crescent. Push through your left foot, pull back through your left hip, and side bend to the left. Stretch back through your right leg, 
sort of incorporating two poses that get called crescent in English. It's a nice one for opening up your psoas. So we're going to do a lot of hip flexion today, so I want to stretch your psoas before we do that. Come back up to center. Bring your hands down to the ground. Bend your right knee. Step forward. Step your left leg back. Lunge. Push through your feet. Bring your hands to your waist. Lift your torso. And stretch your arms up. Hold your left wrist with your right hand. Stretch up long and side bend to the right. Crescent, crescent. Pull back through your right hip. Side bend to the right more. Stretch back through your left leg. Keep pulling on your left wrist with your right hand. Squeeze your head with your arms. Side bend a little more. Work to find stability here. Find happiness in this pose. Now, come up to center, bring your hands down to the ground, step your left leg forward, place your hands on your waist, and stand up. Nice. Now, take your right hand, take your right arm, and do like an underhanded pitch, or if you're Bowling, super cool sport. Or maybe like an underhanded punch. It's like a love punch though, because it's yoga, I don't advocate violence. Now do that again, do a little underhanded punch. Take your left hand, touch the right side of your rib cage. Keep your left hand there and do it again. And notice that there are muscles that fire up under your left hand. Now, you might feel this broad, flat muscle coming forward. That's not the serratus anterior. That's the latissimus dorsi. The serratus anterior kind of look like ribs. They look like fingers. If you think about, like, a shirtless Ryan Gosling. Hmm. You're welcome. You can often see the serratus anterior in a shirtless Ryan Gosling or Ryan Reynolds or any of your favorite Ryans or whoever you like. You've got them too. In this class, we're going to work to strengthen them, to learn more about them, so that you can stabilize yourself, your practice, your chaturangas, and your arm balances. Take your right hand, touch the left side of your rib cage, and then do a few of these like underhanded bowls, or underhanded softball pitches, or underhanded love punches. Hold it. Hold that underhanded action and feel like there's the broad muscle, and then you might even be able to feel the little finger muscles too. They're there whether you can feel them or not. They stabilize your shoulders. They do that action of moving your shoulders away from each other and wrapping them around the sides of your rib cage. We're going to play with that in plank pose. We'll start plank pose with knees down. So get into plank pose, knees down. Start in plank pose, shoulders over your wrists heels over your toes, and then bend your knees a little, stretch your knees back to your feet, and bring your knees down to the ground. Bring your shoulders over your wrists, and then activate your serratus, push through your hands, push the earth away like we did standing in that serratus step up. Move your breastbone, the center of your chest, up toward your spine. And then I want you to play with the opposite of that. Move the center of your chest down. You might be able to feel your shoulder blades squeeze towards each other. That's not what we want in plank pose or in Chaturanga Dandasana. We want this action of protraction. Push through your hands, round through your upper back, so that your shoulder blades move around the sides of your rib cage. It's your serratus. It's your Ryan Gosling muscles that do that. So this is going to build strength in there. It's going to build stability in there so that you can tap into your stability and find happiness in plank pose, in chaturanga, and in bakasana. So keep that action. Push through your hands so it feels like you're rounding through your upper back. Bend your elbows back, lower a little, tuck your tailbone a little. Your goal here is not collapse to the ground. So keep bending your elbows, but when it's time to collapse, stop. Move your rib cage towards your shoulder blades. 
If you can go right to knees down Chaturanga, you may hold it. We're going to go to straight arms again, though. Rib cage towards your spine, rib cage towards your shoulder blades, and press your arms straight. Push through your hands, and now choose knees down or knees up for a little more challenge. Move your rib cage up into your shoulder blades. To do that, push through your hands, and then bend your elbows a little. Don't collapse. So how much you bend your elbows is up to you. I want you to really keep focusing on your rib cage moving up into your scapula, your shoulder blades. If you can go right to Chaturanga, do push your arms straight. Bring your knees to the ground. Swing your feet over to one side and lie down on your back. Stretch your legs out straight. Bring your legs together. Dorsiflex your feet. That means make your feet like mountain bows, like Tadasana. Let's do Supta Tadasana here. So Supta just means on your back, supine. So do Tadasana on your back. Straighten your arms, straighten your legs, spread your toes. And find the stability of a mountain here. So when we find stability in our practice and in our life that we can find moments of happiness even if there's instability all around stretch your arms up straight towards the ceiling your hands about shoulder distance apart stretch your fingers up that's going to create this protraction of your scapula it's going to fire up your ryan muscles and then imagine that you're holding a yoga block or a beach ball between your hands. Squeeze it slightly. Keep reaching up and then stretch your hands up and overhead. Stretch long. So overhead as in towards the ground. Hover your thumbs off the ground. So don't bring your thumbs to the ground. This will keep your muscles working. Imagine you're squeezing the block or the beach ball. Keep moving your rib cage down towards your shoulder blades and then slowly bring your hands back to reach up towards the ceiling. Keep your shoulder blades moving away from each other. Keep squeezing the invisible block or ball. And then slowly stretch your hands back all the way overhead, but don't bring your thumbs to the ground. Hover. Move your rib cage down towards your shoulder blades and slowly, steadily reach your fingers up. Move your rib cage back and relax. Bend your knees, rock and roll back and forth and sit up and come to your hands and knees. Bring your shoulders over your wrists and give it a little shake. I'm being really serious so far in class, so like, get a little loose. To give your hands a little stretch, turn your palms over and do all fours here with the backs of your hands on the ground. Hmm. Don't worry what's happening in your shoulder blades right now. Just stretch your wrists. Move your hips back and forth a little bit. And then turn your hands over again. Regular all fours. Barmanasana. Did you know this has a Sanskrit name? Barmanasana. Cool. We're going to do something that might be new to you. Bend your elbows out to the side. So often when we bend our elbows in yoga, we bend them back. Here, bend your elbows out to the side and move your chest down some. Then move your rib cage back towards your scapula, your shoulder blades. Look forward. And now turn your elbows back towards your knees. Keep your elbows bent. 
elbows pointing towards your feet or your knees or the back of your mat. And then move your breastbone up towards the ceiling, move your rib cage towards your shoulder blades and push your arms straight. Let's do that again. Bend your elbows out to the side. Lower your chest, but don't dump your chest down. Keep your rib cage and your shoulder blades working to stay together. And then slowly point your elbows back. Move your rib cage towards your shoulder blades and push your arms straight. One more, elbows out to the side. Move your rib cage up. Point your elbows back. Rib cage up, push, arms straight. Cool. Now we're gonna try that in downward facing dog. Let's come into down dog. Stretch it out first here. Push through your hands, stretch through your shoulders, lift through your butt, and then look forward. Bend your elbows out to the side. This will lower your chest some. Instead of just dumping into your chest, create that little rounding in your upper back. Move your upper rib cage towards your shoulder blades, and then look forward. Keep your elbows bent, but now do the same thing we did in all fours. Point your elbows back towards the back of your mat. It's almost like we're going to go down to forearms in down dog, but we're not. Instead, we're gonna now push your hips up and back and straighten your arms. Move your chest back. Auto Mukheshwanasana, down dog. Let's do that again, look forward. Bend your elbows out to the side. This will move your upper chest down some. That's cool. But then move your ribs back. Work to create that rounding into your upper back. Keep your elbows bent, pointing them back towards the back of your mat. And then keep moving your rib cage towards your shoulder blades. Push your arms straight. Shift back into downward facing dog. Right. Shift forward into plank pose. Now we get to do this in plank pose. You can do this with your knees down if you would prefer. Whatever helps you tap into your happiness here. Do that. Bend your elbows out to the side. Don't just dump your chest down though. Keep your rib cage moving back to your shoulder blades. Now turn your elbows back, keep your elbows bent, and then push your arms straight. Elbows out to the side, rib cage towards your shoulder blades. Elbows back, still bent, and then push your arms straight. And now, Chaturanga Dandasana. Keep that work of rib cage moving up towards your shoulder blades, elbows turning back. Push your arms straight and downward facing dog. Hmm. Find some stability here. Steady your breath. Steady your dog. Look at your hands. Bend your knees, lift your butt. Start to walk forward. Walk forward. Bend your knees. Turn your feet out and come down into the squat sometimes called malasana. Walk your arms lower on your legs. I kind of wiggle it in, push and resist. Bring your hands to your heart. So it's a feet wide malasana for now. Hmm. Place your hands down and step it back to downward facing dog. Now we're going to play with jumping into that shape. So bend your knees, lift your butt, look past your hands, and then picture yourself where you just were in the squat. Bend your knees. Just a couple of times, shift forward, shift back. Get a little momentum, shift forward, shift back, shift forward, shift back, and jump forward, feet wide, 
heels down, and to your heart. If that's your first time doing that, it doesn't always go well on the first time. So let's try it again. Hands down, downward facing dog. Think about what you're working to do and just do your best. Shift forward, shift back, shift forward, shift back, and jump. Balasana. Hands to your heart. And jump back, down dog. Hands down, jump back. One more Malasana jump. Bend your knees, shift forward, hit a little rock, and jump. Malasana. Sit down. Bring your feet to the ground. Lie down. Set up like Setubanda Sarvangasana, bridge pose. So feet down, feet flat, feet about hip distance apart. Instead of bridge pose though, we're going to do something else. We're going to do some more serratus engagement. Probably not too surprising, those of you who practice with me regularly. I like to do repetition. I like to really drive home what we're working on. This idea of finding stability in ourself is so important because other people tend to, well, other people can tend to offer instability and encourage instability. The world encourages instability, and I want you to find that in yourself. How are we going to do that here? Bend your elbows. This is what I call robot arms. Like a little robot. No, it feels like a robot. <laughs> Push your upper arms down. And now push your upper arms down with about 50% of your effort. So it's not like push, push, push with everything, but push with about half of everything. You might notice that your chest starts to expand, your back starts to come off the ground. Relax, so we can really notice that. So when you relax, everything in your chest comes down. Push with your upper arms about 50% and notice that there is some lift. So you're Shoulder blades are still on the ground. They might not be as weighty as when you relax. Let's see if they are. Relax. Yes, in my shoulder blades, like they feel a lot more connected to the earth. When I push a little, so push with half your effort, my shoulder blades are still on the ground, but my chest lifts away, so the force that my shoulder blades feel on the ground is less. What we're gonna do here is keep this push of 50% and move your rib cage back towards your shoulder blades. Do that. So it's working to bring your upper back down to the ground again or closer to the ground. It's really working to get those muscles at the side of your ribs to fire up to pull your rib cage and your shoulder blades closer together. Relax. Do that again. Push down through your upper arms about 50%. And instead of just letting your chest lift, move your rib cage back towards your shoulder blades. Move your shoulder blades towards your rib cage. Get more of your middle and upper back down to the ground. And relax. Bring the soles of your feet together. Supta Baddha Konasana. Cobbler's pose or Bound angle pose. Place your right hand on your belly, left hand on your heart. Relax in your wrists, relax in your shoulders, relax in your chest. Push your feet together. Tighten up your butt. That can be challenging to do here, but do your best to engage your butt to help you stretch out through your knees. Baddha Konasana. Steady your breath and work to find your stability here, now. Work to find happiness in the stability of Supta Bhattakonasana. Doesn't matter what your pose looks like, it's your pose. Enjoy it.
push your feet together. Bring your knees up and together. Turn to one side. And sit up and come in to downward facing dog. Then jump into Malasana again. So push through your hands. Move your shoulder blades away from each other. Move your rib cage back towards your shoulder blades. Look forward. Rock a little and jump. Malasana. Bring your feet down. Walk your arms down your legs. Bring your hands to your heart. And lift your chest. Steady your breath. Now we're going to keep that rocking action that we've been using to get from down dog into malasana to take us from malasana into or towards bakasana, crow pose. Place your hands on the ground, squeeze your legs into your arms, push your arms back into your legs, and look at your elbows. When we do this, our elbows will be pointing out to the sides. Remember that work we did of having our elbows pointed out to the sides, but then pointing them back towards the back of the mat. You're going to work to recreate that action here. It's going to help stabilize your shoulders. Lift your hips up. Lean forward so that your legs are touching your arms. Lift your heels up. And now work that action of starting to point your elbows back. Now don't worry about going up into crow pose yet. I just want to get a little bit of a rock back and forth. So rock forward, rock back. Roll on the balls of your feet, rock forward, maybe to your toes, rock back. Keep your heels up if you can, rock forward, rock back. Keep pointing your elbows back and pushing through your hands and rock back. And this time rock forward, lean forward even more. Lift through your center of your chest of your rib cage to your shoulder blades, point your elbows back. If you can go up into Bakasana, go up into Bakasana. Or bring your right foot off the ground, lean forward even more. Maybe your left foot will get light and you can bring it up if you can, do. Or bring your right toes down to the ground, bring your left foot off the ground, rock forward. Maybe your right toes will get light, maybe you'll be able to bring them off the ground. Push through your hands, hug your elbows back, do your best Vakasana today. Bring your feet to the ground. Malasana. Don't worry, we'll come back to that again. Find stability now, though, in your Malasana. And be happy with where you went. Halakasana, plank pose. Place your hands down, lift your hips, and step back, plank. And let's engage our shoulders again. Wrap your shoulder blades around the sides of your rib cage. Push through your hands. Keep that action, and we're going to go into Vashistasana, sometimes called side plank. Let's go to the left. Turn your left foot out, roll into the outer edge of your left foot. Left heel down, baby toe side of your left foot on the ground. Step your right foot in front of your hips. Have your feet pointing the same direction, out towards the long edge of your mat. Bring your right hand under your hip and look up. So you can stay here in this modified version. It's a great place to be. Or take your right foot, step it back and stack your right foot on your left and then Stretch long through your spine. Tuck your tailbone. Whichever pose you're in, stretch your right arm up. And let's really work that protraction. Here it's on the left side. So the tendency here can be to drop down into your left shoulder. Instead, push out. Push through your left hand. Lift through your hips a little. And really work to stabilize your left shoulder. Find stability here and smile, find happiness here. Downward facing dog. Bring your right hand down, bring the balls of your feet to the ground, lift your hips up, maybe even bring your heels to the ground. Steady your breath. Now 
and let's go to the right. Turn your right foot out, right heel down, baby toe side of your right foot down, push through your right hand and step your left foot in front of your hips. Have your feet pointing the same direction towards the long edge of your mat. Bring your left hand on your hip and look up. Push through your right hand. Stay here or step your left foot back, stack your feet. They're both Vashistasana, just different variations. Tuck your tailbone underneath you, work to make a straight line from the back of your head, to the back of your hips, to the back of your ankles. Stretch your left arm up, everybody. And then to really work your serratus on the right side here, push through your right hand. Move your rib cage back towards your shoulder blade, shoulder blade wrapping around the right side of your rib cage. Look up and smile. Stabilize here and be joyful. Whatever your pose is today, enjoy it. Downward facing dog. Look forward, bend your knees. Step forward, sit down, stretch your legs out in front of you. Dandasana, pull your hips back and sit up tall. Because we've been using our wrists a lot, make fists and push your fists down into the ground. For some of you, this will make your arms bend. We can use that to help remind us that action of elbows out to the side and then point your elbows back as you push through your hands. So even here, we get to do bakasana arms and give ourselves a little rest for our wrists. Stabilize your pose. Draw your lower back in and sit up tall. Dandasana. Be in your pose here and now. Work to not get pulled away to whatever else is happening today, but be here. And then relax. Make your way into happy baby. We're not done yet, but happy baby is to help us open our hips for another play with Bakasana. Lie down, turn the soles of your feet up towards the ceiling, grab the baby toe side of your feet, have your arms inside your legs rather than outside your legs. So arms inside your knees. Hold the baby toe side of your feet. Pull your knees down towards your shoulders. Turn the soles of your feet up to the ceiling. And then, like we did earlier, work to come off your upper back, off your middle back. Work to bring your waistband towards the ground maybe even your tailbone towards the ground. So things get tighter in the pose. So the pose is more active. Steady your breath. Pull your knees down towards your underarms or towards the floor a little more. Keep your knees bent. Bring the inner edges of your feet together. So pull your feet together. And then let go of your feet, stretch your arms up and extend your wrists. Lift your head and chest. Bring your knees in a little more and then squeeze your legs into your arms. Push your arms back into your legs. Look up past your fingertips. Supta Bakasana. Straight arm version. Wow, you guys are really advancing. Yeah, we can do straight arm version on our back and maybe play with the straight arm version when we turn it all over. Release your feet to the ground. Bring your knees into your chest. Rock into Malasana. Come into the squat. So Bakasana, we generally do it with bent arms, but you can take it to straight arms. So if that's available to you today and you wanna to play with that, just keep pushing once you're getting into the pose and push, push, push. Lift through your belly, lift through the center of your chest so that your torso gets a little bit lighter and you might find you can straighten your arms. But it's your practice. Do what's appropriate for you.
Place your hands on the ground. Your elbows will turn out to the sides here, so hug them in a little. That'll help you squeeze your legs. Keep your arms and legs touching as you lift your butt up. Lean forward, lift your heels up. Point your elbows back a little more, stretch your chest forward. Pause. Protract your scapula. Push through your hands. Move your rib cage up towards your shoulder blades. Move your shoulder blades around the sides of your rib cage. Then lift your heels a little more and lean forward more. Maybe come up onto your toenails. Push through your hands and see what happens. Play with bringing both feet off the ground or one foot off the ground. If you get both feet off the ground, bring the inner edges of your feet together. Wherever you are, keep pointing your elbows back they won't go all the way back. And if you want to play with straightening your arms, play with straightening your arms. Three, two, one. Bring your feet down. Come down. Malasana. One more. Bakasana work. Before we twist it out, slow it down and rest. Place your hands flat and do your Bakasana work. I'll walk you through it, but go at your own pace. Hug your elbows in and back. Lift your hips up. Lean forward, lift your heels, stretch your chest forward. Lengthen through your upper body. Move your ribs back towards your shoulder blades. Rock up to your toenails. Lean forward even more, hug your elbows in, and play with one foot off the ground, and then the other, or both feet off the ground, or play with straight arms. Come down, bring your feet to the ground, place your right hand flat, stretch your left arm up, Push your right shoulder back into your right leg and twist to the left. Bring your left hand down. Stretch your right arm up. Push your left shoulder back into your left arm and twist to the right. Reach up. Bring your right hand down. Bring your hands to your heart and sit down. Stretch your legs out and lie down. It's not Shavasana yet. We're going to do a Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, a bridge pose, just to really open our hips up. So we've done a lot of hip flexion in this class. Bend your knees, place your feet on the ground. Set up for your bridge pose. Bend your elbows, robot arms. Push down about halfway. Move your rib cage back towards your shoulder blades and lift your hips up underneath you. Interlace your fingers, lock your shoulders in, push your shoulders down, push your wrists down, lift your hips up. Steady your breath and really work to stretch across the front of your body. Really work to open your hips. After all that hip flexion, I really find happiness here, getting it all opened up again. Release your hands, lower your hips. Bring your feet wider. Take your feet as wide as your mat. Bring your arms into cactus pose. That's elbows to the side, palms up, arms on the ground. Look to your left and roll your knees to the right. Keep your feet mat distance apart roughly so that your knees are separated, your feet are separated. Karangi Asana.
and relax here. Push down through your arms, come back up to center. Look to the right, and roll your knees to the left. Kareem Yasna. And relax. Let gravity do the work here. back at the center. Stretch your legs out straight. Come back to Supta Tadasana. Legs together, arms at your sides. Squeeze your legs together, dorsiflex your feet, push your shoulders down, push the baby finger side of your hands down, and stretch long through your spine. And then relax. Separate your feet, turn your legs out, turn your palms up, tuck your shoulders under your wrists, under your, sh tuck your shoulders underneath you. Relax. Tuck your shoulders underneath you. Relax your fingers, relax your toes. Close your eyes and release your breath. Relax into your fingers and your hands and your wrists. Relax across your chest. Allow your shoulders to get heavy and release into the earth. Relax your belly. And rest. Shavasana. On the happiness. In this still, stable resting pose.
Start to deepen your breath. Move your fingers. Move your wrists. Move your toes. Move your ankles. Deepen your breath. Start to bring yourself back from the deep rest of Shavasana. Stretch through your arms and stretch through your legs. Bend your knees and turn onto your side. Pause there. Turn in to your happiness. Turn in to the stability inside you. As stable as a mountain. Our practice is there to remind us that whatever is happening on the outside, there is this calm center, this stable center, this joyful center that we can turn to, that we can connect to. that we can breathe into and make more. Bring it out of the deep, dark recesses of our soul. Bring it out into our life. Press yourself up to seated and come to a seated position with your eyes closed and your hands together in front of your heart. One of the ways we get to share the joy inside us is through song. Please join me to sing one ohm. Exhale. Inhale. Thank you. Namaste. Thanks for joining me. I'm Stephen Iwashki, and this has been an Adventure Yoga Practice. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, please do. You can just click up there to subscribe. And if you're looking for ideas for your next class, you can click there. Thanks. See you on the mat soon.